Gary, here we are on board p and Cruises Arvia in your very own 710 Club. Welcome. Thank you. It's beautiful. <laughs> it is, right? I love it. Yeah. Um, you and I share a passion for great music, lovely drinks. Yes. And I've got a few questions here on sure. the cards. Sure. You up for it? I'm up for it. Do you want to begin? Can I start? I think you should. Okay, I'm going to pick from the drinks pile. There's a music pile and a drinks pile. Yeah. I'm going to go the drinks pile. Now, is this a question for you or one for me? Both. You okay, go first. Okay, for both. First drink after a gig. Oh, it's a very good question, that is. I'm going to go for a Negroni. I, do you know, I'd do the same. Cheers. Cheers. God bless you. Good Absolutely. health. Good health indeed. Lovely. Oh, it's the chocolate one. It's, oh, you've got the chocolate with a cherry. That does make it. Good, right? It turns out everything is better in life with a cherry on top. It is. Yeah. Love it. I've got the classic. I'm going to go for the music file, Gary. The thing I like about a Negroni, though, it's that intensity after a gig. It's something you can really kind of relax into. Take your time. Cold. Yes. Uh, after a frenetic gig, something slow. Oh. Cold. Chilled. Refreshing. Lovely. Invigorating. Yeah. Oh, the first dance at your wedding. First dance. So we, we had a, a strange wedding. We escaped to the Caribbean with just our very closest family. So we didn't really do a first dance, did you not? No, we really tipped weddings on their head. I love that though. My wife's brother designed her dress for her. She walked down the aisle by herself. It, we did everything on its head to the disgust of our parents. I'm sure they but loved it. But they've forgiven us now. Yes. 28 years later. <laughs> Took their time. <laughs> Slow thawing, <laughs> thanks to that Caribbean warmth. What about you? Mine, well, I remember it was, um, it was the theme to the Spy You Love Me. It was Nobody Does It Better, Carly Simon. Oh, I, love I was a massive fan of Sir Roger Moore. I've forgotten that song. Great song. Yeah. Really romantic, beautifully expressive. And I remember I was dancing with Sophie. Everyone's looking around. I'm not great on the dance floor. But I was kind she, of more She's swing. your wife, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, she's, she's one of our pets. No, I was dancing with Sophie. And she's a beautiful dancer. And I remember whispering in her ear, I can't believe I said this. I said, I love you even more than Roger Moore. <laughs> Who says oh, that on their you, wedding day? You. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> She's still with me, so something went okay. Fantastic. Extraordinary. Right, right I'm going to go for the next one. Go music. I'm going to go music as well. Okay. Music that reminds you of holidays. Ooh. George Harrison, Dream Away, oh. from the album Gone Troppo, because I think he wrote Gone Troppo in the Caribbean. And it's got a lovely lilting kind of feel to it. The sound is really bright. So that album always reminds me of Sunshine. I think it was recorded in Montserrat. <gasps> yes, I think so. I'm going to check. I love it. If someone can check. I knew it was somewhere sunny. It, it, it was a very famous studio that was there. In fact, George Martin, I think, owned it by the end. And it was destroyed in the, it was a volcano there. Exactly, there was something right. hap happened there. Um, but Elton John, Brian, a lot of big albums were recorded in Montserrat. I think it was there. Literally, yeah. that's why I love hanging out with you. you see I that? never knew that. Uselessinformation.com. Yeah. Phenomenalinformation.co.uk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's it. It's gone about a bit you? regional the... now. Yeah. .co .uk. Okay, fine. We'll go global. Um, we'll go pan me, universal. Holidays. You know what? Yeah, Last night, it's, it's been my first time on board a P&O cruise, actually. Lovely. I've stayed on board. And I just had this feeling last night that I need to put some music on. Yes. Dialed in. My love is like a ship on the ocean. <laughs> and I was just dancing around the room. I thought, this is fantastic. Rock the boat, don't rock the boat, baby, rock the boat. It's just Amazing. great. So I'm going to say that one. Beautiful. Well, that's going to remind me of holidays from this moment onward forever. Can I add another one to that? Answer? Of course you can. You can, can add whatever you like. Just because I'm together with you and there's something about when we're together, yes. it makes me feel reminded of wham. <laughs> and how great they were Brilliant. and that no one's ever replaced them Ollie. Totally. If there's any record well, labels I'm, watching. I mean, I've got the moves. I think, you know. He's got the looks. So I'm going to say Club Tropicana. Oh, come on. That's a Every holiday. day of the week, Club Tropicana. Great holiday. That song. is what I'm going to play in my cabin all night long. And the inspiration for your shirts as well, I think, <laughs> the video. It's the inspiration for my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What a great vibe. Amazing. Right, drinks. I'm going in. Ooh. Does setting influence how much you enjoy a drink? Interesting one. Good question. Because I've been to restaurants where, you know, they give you like a, an experience with, mm. with food, where yes. you're eating seafood and they put earphones on it, it's the sound of the sea, and they think it influences your palate. What do you think about that? 
Well, I think there's some truth in it. There's evidence to suggest that if you're listening to like heavy rock when you're kind of drinking a, a red wine, that it makes it feel like it's accentuated. So actually, yeah. I think there is a lot to the idea of setting. And you know, I've got the glass house bar here on Arvia, yeah. and it's that widescreen ocean view that definitely brings light in. It feels like maybe the wine shines in the glass, but it's the destinations as well. Sure. You know, you might have Lisbon one day, Barbados the next, but it's definitely that feeling of reaching out and bringing the world in. Sure. So I think setting does, and here in the seven. 10 actually you know it's, it feels you know like a kind of groovy speakeasy type vibe it feels intimate and cool so I think definitely I'm gonna go off on a tangent go here on and then. say that music actually influences yes. drink because yes. if you watching a nice band like we were watching a great band in here last night just makes the drinks flow a it, little easier I taste better I think it does yeah. and I quite often you know I'll think about what I'm drinking and what kind of music I'm listening to you know, because I, yeah. I, I think there's something to that. I do too. I think there's, there's a show in this, you know. I think there could be not only a, 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 du a famous duo about to come back, but also a TV I show. I think we've got a telly show I right there. We have. I mean, we've just nailed the pitch. So labels, if you're watching, and TV companies, if you're watching, there's magic happening here <laughs> right now. two ideas in one. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. Genuinely, I'm going to think about that. A little pairing with sounds and tunes. Yes. It's true, because your mood, it's like the atmospheric conditions, like the, the weather will influence what you might enjoy. You wouldn't necessarily have a huge glass of heavy port on a beach, you know, in kind of sunny Spain. But sure. you, you would if you were up in the, the Arctic. For me, the relationship of music with, with drink, it's, it's why it's always been so special, is to, to watch a beautiful concert or listen to something with a nice glass of red, just sat having a moment. Uh, that's, I think, the relationship between drink and music for me. Setting is everything, there it turns out. Right. Is it uh, me? I think it is you. I'm gonna go mm. music again. Okay, do it. I'm inspired by this wham stuff. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Instrument that you wish you could play. Do you want to go first? Do you play anything? I do. Oh, you do. Yeah. So this idea of a duo, it's not. Bit it's got piano. legs. Bit of piano, oh, bit really? guitar, French horn. What? Bit of the organ, bit what? of singing. I was a chorister at King's College Cambridge when I was a baby. I was a tiny singing baby. <gasps> true story. Well, that's for another time. Multi-talentless. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's very true. <laughs> Literally. A bit of everything. But My dad not was a lot of much. Dad was a music teacher, so Is music that was right? a, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was love a, it. He's still a lovely bloke, tootling on his oboe. He's a gem. He's a peach. That's why you love music so much. I adore it. Yeah. It's in my blood. It's in my life. It's the thing I do all the time when I'm not at work is mm -hmm. listening to tunes, going to gigs, hanging out, thinking about music. Adore it. So let me rephrase the question: <laughs> instrument you wish you couldn't play? <laughs> well, no. That, I, well, I wish I could play like the xylophone because it's just funny. It's just xylophone. Like, or the vibes, even better. Nice mellow sound. Bobby Hutchison. I've got a friend who plays the vibes, and I'm going to give you a video of his. He's an actor now, but he's an amazing musician. I'll send you a video of I his. I cannot wait. Do you think he'd give me a lesson? I think I think he probably would, oh, actually. Cool. I'll yeah. give him a bottle of wine. Yeah. A really nice one. That, well, that, it's done. Done. It's done. How about yeah. you? The instrument you don't play, but you wish you could? <sighs> it's a good question, because I'm a very happy pianist. Yeah. Because to me, my, my piano is the accompaniment to my voice and is really the vessel for my songs. So I've never really searched any further. Although, however, I do pick up a guitar now and get, play it very badly. So I probably wish I could play it better. Guitar a bit better. B bit better. We'll take it. Yeah. Uh, I'll go for, oh, I'm quite tempted by the music pile. It's very yeah, it is, isn't it? music. Yeah, it is, Yeah, again. <gasps> Favorite soundtrack for a workout? Soundtrack for a workout. I'm a big fan of Hans Zimmer's soundtracks. Um, but I'm going to go off piste here and go for the original Star Wars. Film. Oh, yeah. Love it. Love Uplifting. That. Absolutely. Heroic. It is. And also at a time where, like, trumpets. I hate trumpets. And yeah, <laughs> did, 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 you know, it's just like, <laughs> a, just a wonderful opening to a, to a movie. Brilliant. I John would, Williams, right? John Williams? Yeah. Yeah. I would go for a workout for the training montage from Rocky IV. Oh, yeah. Got to be done. You know, when so, he's running up the, the mountains, he's training in the kind yes. of natural world. Oh, yes. I don't know why I'm doing this. It feels like the right thing that to do That was at trumpets point. as well, I It think. was trumpets yeah. and synth. Da, 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 and just da, 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 such da, a great da. shot at the end, him doing that. And oh, I think it was, I think interestingly, it was Rocky IV yes. where Dan Hartman, who wrote Relight My Fire, right, wrote Living in America. No it was Dan Hartman, who was really the king of disco at that time. That is yeah. amazing, because that sequence with J James Brown is brilliant in the movie. Yeah. Apollo Creed comes down. Oh, I it's love that shot. It's a proper song written for a movie. Genius, it's genius. Uh, sadly, he's dead now, but what an amazing talent. Beautiful, and it made that movie, but I listen to that track more often than you'd imagine. Really? 
Yeah. Living in America. Out of hour. Yeah. 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 That's brilliant. James Brown. At his, I mean, yeah. he's got it. He's got it going on even then. Yeah. Amazing guy. Yeah. Uh, your Shall pick. I go? Your pick. I'm tempted to stick with music because we're, we're getting so getting much out of it. Are we? Who needs a drink? Here you we got go. that. Oh, this is this is an interesting one for you. Do you write songs? I have done one. I've released one single, "Snow on the Borderline." <laughs> Who didn't tell me all this? You could get Snow it. on. The, I wrote it when Snow I was, on the Borderline. When, when Sophie didn't love me anymore, I wrote a sad song when I was much younger, and then all my friends liked it when, at parties, and then we got back together, and then she liked it, and then somebody dared me in lockdown to release a single, and I did it, and it's out there. So it's just, available. just, just I need, I need to know what's behind that lyric, "Snow on the it Borderline." It was the idea that she'd gone over the borderline, and the borderline had been covered by cold snow, so that we weren't, you know, the warmth had gone, gone away. Yeah. Well, it was very sad. I did love her very much, and I still do. Wow. Chris Evans played it on Virgin Radio. You're kidding. No, I'm not. I love I this. Know, true. I love this. It's bizarre. So, a song you wish you'd have written? Anything by you, for a start. Um, something like Live and Let Die, actually. Something that stays in the consciousness that's punchy and unexpected. Because it sort of re it wings that? It was. It yeah. was McCartney yeah. reborn in a kind of new vibe, new way. Yeah. I mean, the Wilburys. Anything by the Travelling Wilburys, I'm a big Wilburys. fan of. Yeah, I would say kind of classic era stuff like that. Anything that reinvents a superstar like Paul McCartney, George Harrison, yeah. stuff like that. That would be for me. Wow. How about you? Worked with him a couple of times, Jeff Lynne. And he <laughs> talks a lot about the Travelling Wilburys and the fact that we all sit now and just go, that could never happen again because so many amazing names. Um, Dylan. Dylan, and, yeah, Orbison. Uh, Orbison, uh, George Harrison. Harrison. It's Petty. Jeff Lynne, Tom, Tom Petty. I mean, like but he describes the evenings like they're sat around a dinner table and someone just picks a guitar up and they start a song. And that's what they spend the rest of the evening doing. You know, it's just... It's surreal, isn't it? seems it? bizarre. It's real but, and they're all having dinner and chatting yeah. back. That's why yeah. I love it. Yeah. So I'm going to link this to my answer. Mm. Mr. Blue Sky. I wish that I've... I mean, doesn't everyone? Genius. I mean, what a... It's just like, I mean, like a mini opera, isn't it? It's just a wonderful piece of music and kind of got everything I love, because I love the Beatles, and there's so much of the Beatles in Jeff Lynne's songwriting, yeah. but it was just like a, it was like the, the latest version of the Beatles, uh, done in Jeff's way, and I, I, I'm just a big fan of his. So love that. Wished I'd have written that one. Incredible scenes. Final question, I'm gonna go in for a drink. Oh, Gary, if you were a, co <laughs> if you were a cocktail, what cocktail would you be? Oh my goodness. Yeah, Blue Hawaii, yeah, just, I mean, you look amazing, yeah. I'd drink Thank it. you. You look good. Thank you. Uh, it's so no one noticed me on the ship today. Yeah. Um, a cocktail, let me see. You know what's a, a, a beautiful cocktail? Yes. In fact, you, you'll like this. Go on. Once we had the 710 Club, I, I'm constantly now looking for ideas around the world as we travel. We're very lucky enough to travel. And I look at other people doing things. So I was in a bar in Las Vegas. And um, someone said, would you like the whistle pig trolley? And I said, I've never heard of that cocktail. What, what's that? I went, no, 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 it's a thing. It's a physical thing. And overcame the whistle pig trolley. The trolley. And on the trolley was 12, 20, 25, all the different years of, of whistle, whistle pig. pig. So we were sort of looking at each other. So what happens now? And they went, we make you a Manhattan. Oh. I was like, what? what are we can choose any of this. Let's go 12. Let's not go too heavy, too early. So out come the big, um, the tum you know, the big tumbler yeah, to, yeah, to, the, mixes, to yeah, yeah. the mixers. The, the ice came out of the little fridge yeah. and in went the whistle pig. And then they do all the theatre of 25 times you're meant to stir a cocktail, aren't you? All this stuff. Then the pour in over the big ball of ice. And I thought, we need this in the 710 Club. I was videoing, sending videos back to the team. It was so good. And then this delicious, it's a very interesting taste of Manhattan. It's got the sweetness, but it's also got that, just a little bit of heat on yeah. the back of the throat. Got that kick. So I was gonna say, if I was a cocktail, I'd be a Manhattan. You are a Manhattan, Gary Barlow. You the can be a Manhattan. The of the orange. Complex, <laughs> intriguing. Sounds like my wife saying this. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the intriguing bit. Yeah. Predictable, annoying. No, you're yeah. none of those things. None of those things. <laughs> I think it's a great choice. Classic, an absolute classic. What about you? I love, there's a cocktail called a Southside and it feels like a kind of a, an exuberant lightning strike. It's gin, mint, lemon, sugar wow. syrup, all shaken up. You know, you put it into a lovely cocktail glass, beautifully kind of 
it's it's one of those vibrant cocktails that once you've had one, you, the, the evening's yours. You really? just want to go forth. What's it called again? It's called a Southside. South. I think it came from Chicago. Yeah. I think ga gangsters used to make it actually. So I don't don't think that quite fits necessarily right. with my vibe. Right. But I think just that bright kind of sure. you know, fun loving Southside. I'll make you one. I'm, I'm going to try one. Yeah, yeah. I'll make you one. Be a okay. pleasure. Okay. Cheers. Okay. See you. Lovely Safe to travels. See you. Thanks, Gary. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful.